everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I'm hanging out here in the woods in western Pennsylvania and I came across this beautiful mushroom right here. And at first glance, it kind of resembles a choice edible mushroom that many of you are familiar with, which is hen of the woods, or sheep's head, griffola frondosa, or the maitake mushroom. But upon closer inspection, something tells me that this is not the prized hen of the woods. And it actually isn't, but many people, this time of year especially, are getting confused, thinking that this one is Hen of the Woods. And if you look at a lot of these mushroom forums online, a lot of people are posting pictures, they're finding this mushroom and wondering if it is Hen of the Woods, and it is not. So which mushroom is this? Is this one edible? What can we do with it? Those are all great questions, and that's the topic of this brief video. So this mushroom right here, and there's actually a lot of it that you probably can't see. There's some over here, there's some behind this tree as well, but this is probably the largest fruiting. This one is known as the Black Staining Polypore or Meripolis substinii. That's a Latin name, Meripolis substinii. And so this looks like the maitake mushroom because both are related. Both are in the same family of fungi known as Meripolaceae, that's the family. And this one used to be in the same genus as maitake mushroom, which is the Griffola genus. But in the 1980s, I believe, this one received its own genus, which is Meripolis. So you typically find this in hardwood forests in the summer months through fall. And it can act as a parasite, it can also act as a saprophyte. So a parasite on living trees, but a saprophyte helping to break down the lignin, the cellulose, and the hemicellulose. These are all plant cell wall compounds. So you're looking in hardwood forests in the summer months for the black standing polypore. And this is a polypore mushroom, meaning on the underside of this mushroom, it's composed of thousands of tiny, tiny pores from where the spores are dispersed. So there are no gills. And this mushroom can you know, approach 12 inches across, but whenever it's younger, you can see it's nice and small right here, just a couple inches across. And it looks like an amorphous mass in the beginning, but then it opens up and it fans out. Now, it's composed of multiple caps, and these caps are slightly yellowish and grayish at first, but then it becomes kind of darkened. Now, here's the key identifying characteristic to help you differentiate between Meripolis substinii, the black standing polypore, and the maitake mushroom. This one right here, the black staining polypore, bruises black, hence the name black staining polypore. But here's what's interesting. It doesn't always stain black right away. So many people will find this mushroom, they'll bruise it, they'll rub it, they'll cut it in half, and there will be no color change whatsoever. And they're gonna wonder, you know, is this the black staining polypore or is it the maitake mushroom? We'll give it some time. You know, if I cut this right now, it might not stain for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or longer. And so I'm gonna take out my knife right here and I'll show you what I mean. If I just cut a cap down here, there's no color change whatsoever. And there's no color change on this either. So it's not like a belete mushroom, which will immediately stain blue or another color. It'll take some time. So I was here yesterday, and that's when I found this cluster. And you could see right here, see how dark it is right here? That's where I made the incision right there. And so it stained black within about 30 to 40 minutes. So it took me some time to figure out, to positively identify this as the black standing polypore. But I did have an idea that it was a black standing polypore because the other key identifying characteristic is that you're finding this in the summer months. If you're finding a hand of the woods like mushroom in the summer months, there's a good chance that it's a black standing polypore. So to summarize, there are basically two key identifying characteristics to help you differentiate between the black standing polypore, Meripolis substinii, and the maitake mushroom. Number one, what time of year are you finding it? Are you finding it in the summer months? Are you finding it in June, July, August? If so, it's probably the black standing polypore, especially if, and the second key identifying characteristic, is if it stains black. So is it staining black after 30 minutes, after 40 minutes, when you bring it home, after it's been bruised a little bit? If so, then it's probably the black staining polypore. Now this one will grow in the autumn as well, and that'll confuse you maybe even a little further because you will find maitake in the fall definitely. But if you're finding it in the summer months and it bruises black, it's most likely the black staining polypore, Meripolis substinii. Now just a couple more points on color. And the first one is that the color black is subjective. So many times when you see this being bruised or stained, it will appear dark brown, if not a light black. So it's not always gonna look like you took a permanent marker and just rubbed it on the mushroom, like a perfect jet black color. It will look dark brown, it might look light brown at first, but it'll be on the spectrum of brown to black. So we could call it a dark brown standing polypore, but I think just black fits because many times when you spot it, at least from a distance, it does appear black. Another thing regarding color is that Notice the color of this right here, because the black standing polypore, whenever it's fresh, it tends to display colors of yellow and gold, especially around the margins. And that might help you differentiate between this and the maitake mushroom, especially in the autumn. Whenever I see the maitake mushroom or hen of the woods, 
I typically see it in shades of gray or silver or brown. Yes, sometimes it will appear yellowish, but many times the black sanding polypore is yellowish, at least when young. Whereas when I find the maitake mushroom, that one's typically silvery, grayish, or brownish. Now you're probably wondering, what can you do with this mushroom? Can you eat it? And yes, you can eat this mushroom. It's not really considered a choice edible fungus, but you can eat it. It's kind of tough in consistency and texture, but you can definitely eat it. Just cook it before you do eat it. We don't see a lot of medicinal research on this mushroom. If any research, I looked into it and I didn't really find anything on this particular species, but we do see some research on a related species, which is the European Meripolis giganteus. We don't see a lot of traditional cultures utilizing this for food or medicine either, so that's why a lot of people really like Hen of the Woods as opposed to this one. But you can definitely eat this mushroom. Just make sure you positively identify it and make sure you cook it first. Now here's a little bit of interesting trivia about Meripolis sumstinii. So where do we get that species name sumstinii from? Well, there's a little bit of Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania history behind this mushroom. So this mushroom is named after a Pennsylvania native by the name of David Ross Sumstein. And why is this important? Well, I film all these videos in Pennsylvania. That's where I live. I live in Western Pennsylvania. So David Ross Sumstein was born in Somerset County, which is about 70 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Then he spent the majority of his life in Pittsburgh as a public school teacher and principal. But he was an amateur mycologist and spent all of his free time studying mushrooms in mycology. And he collected in his lifetime over 10,000 specimens that he then donated to the Carnegie Museum. So for all of his efforts, at least five species in the world have been named after him, including this one right here. So a little bit of Pittsburgh trivia for you. So there we have it, the black staining polypore, we could consider it the dark brown staining polypore as well, Meripolis substinii, a fascinating fungus that you're very likely to find this time of year. Just make sure that it does bruise brownish black, and if you're finding it this time of year, it most likely is this mushroom and not the prized hen of the woods. If you're finding it in the autumn and it's not bruising black and it has grown at the base of an oak tree, then it probably is the maitake mushroom. Two fantastic fungi. I encourage you to get out there and at least find this one right now and look for maitake in a couple months. Thanks for watching.